So in this video, we're going to talk a little bit about ossification, which is the term that we use for formation of bones. And if you look at this picture over here, we've got a fetus that is forming and this process of ossification or the formation of bones actually begins in utero. And it starts at about eight to nine weeks of pregnancy. So it's actually ossification. It's actually the formation of bone that causes us to go from calling a developing baby an embryo to actually calling them a fetus. So the fetal stage begins when we start to see bones being produced or when we start to see ossification happening. There are two different types of ossification and you're gonna get much more familiar with them through the activities um, that you do in this particular folder. But I wanna give you just kind of a general introduction to them now and talk about them just a little bit. So the first type of ossification that I want to mention is membranous ossification. And the name of this particular type of ossification gives you some information about what's actually happening here. So intra is within, basically, right? And membranous refers to a membrane. So this is a type of ossification that's happening within a membrane. This is the primary way that flat bones in the body are formed. So there's a couple of good examples of flat bones in the body that I want to use um, in talking about this. The collarbones, so the clavicles, are an example of flat bones that are primarily formed through intramembranous ossification. In addition, the skull bones. So if you look at the skull on the fetus here, they are considered to be flat bones as well and they form primarily, again, through this intramembranous ossification. If you look at this picture over here and you actually look at the fetus and the skull that's forming, you'll notice that we have these different areas that at one point, okay, were just a fibrous membrane, and now they're kind of starting to harden into something that's more solid, which is bony tissue starting to form. You'll also notice that as part of the skull, we have big areas where it's still really just a fibrous membrane and that intramembranous ossification has not yet occurred. You can't see it in this particular diagram, but there's a big area of cartilage right here at the top of the head where the bones haven't fused together and where we've still just got um, that membrane in which the bone will eventually ossify. This is the soft spot that you see on infants. It's hugely important because, first of all, um, it's going to allow the baby to pass through the birth canal with its head being able to be shaped and formed and squished a little bit because we don't have totally solid, hard tissue making up the skull, but we've got lots of, area of areas of cartilage which are softer and are, which are more malleable. The other thing is during the first two years of life, the brain is going to grow largely. Um, it's going to grow much larger than it was at birth. And having these softer areas where the bones aren't fused together, where we've still just got that membrane, is going to allow the brain to expand within the skull. So baby's soft spots, particularly that one right here, there's also big ones along the side that um, many people aren't as familiar with. But those soft spots usually aren't completely ossified or completely replaced with bone until about two years of age, which is going to allow for the brain to continue to grow. So that's intramembranous ossification, and you're going to have a chance through the activities um, that you do in this folder to learn about it more. The other type of ossification that we see happening in the body is what's known as endochondral ossification. So again, you can break down the name of this type of ossification to find out what basically is happening, and that's my whiny German shepherd. Endochondral uh, means that it's happening within the cartilage. So endo is within, chondral is a term that basically means cartilage. So endochondral ossification is bone formation that's happening from a hyaline cartilage model. If you look at the picture that we have, again, over here of this fetus that's forming, You'll notice that we've got a lot of long bones and irregular bones, and these types of bones um, primarily form through the endochondral ossification mechanism. And you can see, for example, if you look down here at the lower leg bones um, and then this area of the knee and the upper leg bones, we've got bone that's forming from a hyaline cartilage model, 
And then we've got areas of that highland cartilage model where the bone hasn't completely formed, where we're still just looking at cartilage. So that's the process for endochondral ossification. It's the primary mechanism by which the other bones besides flat bones are actually formed. And in this particular type of ossification, bones are forming from a hyaline cartilage model as opposed to from a membrane in the body. One of the things that you should know about ossification though, is that when we say flat bones are formed primarily from intramembranous ossification and long bones are formed primarily from endochondral ossification, it's not as cut and dried, it's not as black and white as that. So the clavicles, for example, um, are representative of this. The clavicles are flat bones, they are formed primarily through intramembranous ossification, but there's also some endochondral ossification that happens within them as well.